Yes, everyone, it's time once again for that fantastic Sabbath evening program, A Man and His Stool, starring... Oh, <clears throat> hi, it's me, Scott Christopher. Hey, welcome to A Man and His Stool. What's the matter with you? You're not... My one-person in-house audience, you're not, you're not seeing anything? It's on there. Trust me. I know it is. <laughs> I can see. This is what you get during the coronavirus. You don't get anybody who actually is in the studio watching with you. So it's... Say you're on here. That's what I'm All right. Well, you go to the Scott Christopher Facebook page. I've got Jennifer Gray, who's with me, and three others at the moment. Uh, good to have you here on A Man in a Stool. Um, I am Scott Christopher, and uh, I am just kind of messing around on a Sunday evening. I'm still in my Sunday attire. Why is it that you're... Why are you coming over here? I told you. Why are you doing this? You're not just go to, Just go to your Facebook page. You're not there. Okay. Anyway, so my wife won't be able to watch, but ten of you are. She'll figure it out eventually. It's okay. I'm not stupid. It's not I didn't say you were stupid. I'm just saying don't search for Scott Christopher. Just go to... Aren't we friends? Yes, but you don't show up. Well, if we're friends, then there should be... I don't want... I'm on right now. <laughs> this is... Yeah, I, I know. Uh, just a quick reminder of the cutest baby in the world right there. That's little Harrison. And uh, I am happy well, to admit on. that during... What's that? Now it's on? Oh, okay. Uh, during this week, the week that was, thank you, Daryl. Welcome from Tucson. This was the week that I decided that I would embrace the notion that I am, in fact, a grandpa. Um, it wasn't easy. It still isn't because I still act like a non grandpa. I still can't handle the fact that someone would think of me as a grandpa. But I have to admit, you know, when I see that, I mean, that's, that's my grandson right there. So I'm happy to welcome him to the clan. Um, and, and, and the mother and father are, well, the father's healthy. The mother's doing fine. <laughs> Nothing happened to the father. Uh, in this particular setting, but anyway, so we are we're 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 here with a man in a stool. I'm here on my stool. Um, for those of you that have never joined me for a man in his stool, you know that I know that you think that I don't know that the title of the show sounds fecal, um, but I do. And see, that's that's the layer of humor that we're dealing with. That's the, that's the level of genius. Vamos. Anyway, uh, so what happened this week? Let's just, let's just run through the week. And if you have any comments, I can see them while I'm doing this. Um, earlier this week, yay, Labor Day. Those of you that aren't BYU fans, I apologize. But if you're just college football fans in general, you have to love the fact that college football is back. I won't talk a lot about sports necessarily, but... Just for a, a Cougar fan who's been suffering for so long with mediocrity, they got one huge win in. They won by 52 points over a team that finished ranked last year. And boy, as soon as I start talking about football or BYU, viewers go down. That's what happens. But this was a great Labor Day for me. <laughs> it, was, um, it was sweet. Now they're saying that poor BYU uh, apparently has had, some, and, and you know, even the coach Sataki on the sidelines with his dancing and how excited he is. I mean, how couldn't he be? He was, he's up against one of his, his old friends and coach Niu Matololo. And um, it was just, it was, a, it was not a hard fought game at all. Of course, the argument is that you see in all of the headlines is, is BYU really that good? Or was Navy just unprepared? And I think most of you probably would say a little of both. But at the end of the day, BYU is just that good. And if, and if Navy even had been prepared with live tackling drills, they still would have been beaten by 30 or 40 by this particular team, in my opinion. Anyway, now it turns out we've learned BYU, their next game, which is supposed to be next Saturday against Army, has been postponed. 
due to the corona. So that's what we've learned. Uh, earlier this week, too, uh, <laughs> signs of the times. I, I don't care who you are or where you live, if you're Christian or not, if you read the Bible or not, you can't. <laughs> Some of the things that are happening are definitely prophetic last day things. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to crack open this, the seven seal. Or I just was, the other day I was thinking, though, uh, back before the millennium, they were talking about oh, what's going to happen, uh, you know, in 2000. Should we get our ascension robes and all stand on top of tall buildings? Is this going to be the end? And then there were those who were looking at scripture and saying, well, mathematically, really, the second coming probably wouldn't happen until 2020. So I just remember that this year was kind of pointed. At, I'm not saying there's any second. There, there's no way. There's way too many things that still have to happen that haven't. But I mean earthquakes in diverse places, all kinds of weird stuff happening. I mean, hurricane. It wasn't a hurricane that came through Salt Lake only because we don't live by the ocean. So it wasn't technically a Hurricane Hannah or Hurricane Phil. But I mean, look at these freaking images. And those of you that, that haven't been downtown to see the carnage, pretty cool. I mean, it's it was an interesting week. Also, by the way, Labor Day, and literally last weekend, it, it, you know, I, I think I posted that, I posted something earlier this week where I was, you know, I went to bed in my Speedo because it was so hot. <laughs> of course, I didn't go to bed in my Speedo. I don't have one. I've, have I ever had one? Anyway, and then the, like literally the next day, it was 22 below zero. There's some place in Utah here called Peter's Sink. And it's some kind of sinkhole that a, a, a Utah State kid discovered like 30 years ago, whose name wasn't Peter. So I don't know why it's called Peter's Sink. But it's one of, if not the cold, it, it reaches the coldest temperatures in the contiguous 48. And it was 40 below or something uh, four days ago. You know, two days after it was 95, Labor Day, I was still in the high 80s. The next day and the day after, we've got winds coming through. It was 40 miles. Uh, Denver, uh, Colorado, I was reading, Colorado went from 95 one day to 33 the next with snow packing the mountain roads. If you've seen the pictures, I didn't pull any of those pictures down. It's been an interesting week. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about sports, but I got to talk about the U.S. Open and what an idiot Djokovic is. I'm sorry, I don't forgive you. Maybe it was an accident if you didn't see this. Similar in some respects to Serena. Um, there's this, I'm the greatest in the world. I'm the number one seed in every tournament. I'm the best that's ever lived. Rafael Nadal's not in the tournament this year. He's the guy I pull for. Porque soy de España. Uh, I'm not really from Spain, but... Um, but this, you know, poor sportsmanship and the and really the feigning of injuries. Oh, I'm losing. It's because I'm something hurts. And, you know, he gets his butt whipped. Essentially, things are going. It's the middle of the, you know, the match. And, and uh, he slams a ball into the wall, almost hits somebody then really hard out of anger. Nothing said. And then at the end of this particular set or game or whatever, he, he hits the ball behind his back, just hits it, but right at that woman, the lines woman, and it hits her right in the throat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, get out. Yeah, it's, it, you're done. And so he was disqualified. Standing around talking for 15, 20 minutes, our poor Spanish player, Busta, was like, uh, ¿Qué pasa aquí? Madre mía, por favor, que podemos jugar? Or, you know, eject this brat. Ejected, boom, done. Serena, not ejected, but lost. Boom, done. Uh, you know, she's an American player. She's dominant the world over, no doubt about it. Didn't break my heart to see her lose. I'm not going to lie to you. I, it's not that I don't like her as a person um, at all. I just, it was kind of just the same sort of, it feels like she's just kind of expecting to always win, and then she'll play these little mind games on court, and then scream at the top of her lungs. 
it was just like Azarenka, take it. And we still had an American win against Azarenka uh, yesterday, the U.S. Open female. The woman winner was Naomi Osaka, who l literally <laughs> gave up her American citizenship to, to, so she's both Japanese and American uh, from her parentage, but she's like a girl from Florida. How you doing? I'm Naomi Osaka. Here to play some tennis, you know? And it's like, you know, but it always says Japan by her name. I'm like, she kind of looks Japanese, but she also looks very American and she sounds American. It turns out she gave up, you know, she chose to be a Japanese citizen so that she could play tennis for the Japanese team in the Olympics that would be going on right now. Or maybe they'd already be done. I don't know. This year's Summer Olympics. I shouldn't smile. It's not funny. And I don't take pleasure in people's misfortunes. But hey, we are live, by the way. Uh, this is fully live. So if you have any comments or anything, feel free here on Facebook while we're doing it live. It'll be recorded for those of you later, of course. But, you know, if you have any opinions about anything that I'm talking about, this is just my week in review. This is what I've learned. Life lessons from the Week in Review from a man and his stool. Uh, if you're just joining us and you're not familiar with the name of the program, it's a man and his stool. It's just a guy, me, sitting on his stool. Just, you know, nothing really is... Uh, here's all these other pictures I already showed you. It's just me kind of just talking. The week kind of wrapped up with 9-11, Patriot Day. And in the little burg that I live in, Riverton, Utah, um, they had celebrations um, to remember 9-11, which is really cool. I think it's very patriotic. Um, they had a car show that was a parade. Apparently, they drove like 10, 15 miles all around Riverton, which isn't that big. But if you go up and down every single street with a string of 100 classic cars... It makes for a pretty cool day. And so uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. My wife did. She said it was awesome. But that was kind of fun. But then that... <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Yes, I said stool. Then that night, you've got fireworks. And there were two fireworks displays. There was one in the park just over here um, by us, about two blocks away, Centennial Park. And then there was another one, like a twin display, going on over at the Riverton City Park. And while it is beautiful and cool, and thanks very much for spending our money on that. I mean, I think there's worse ways that you can spend taxpayer money. I love fireworks displays, especially during this year when we need something. But it was just kind of, it was just, it was, it's, it was almost celebratory as opposed to memorial, like you know, the day is somber and it's this huge tragedy and loss, remembering the victims of 9-11, the tragedy, uh, and then, you know. Um, and I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying definitely that they were wrong to do that at all. I'm just saying that was sort of the, um, that was sort of my, my take on it as I walked out on my porch and saw these beautiful things and, I thought, I don't know, things exploding and fire and stuff, and we're remembering 9-11. Maybe not. I don't know. But then I also noticed that our mayor is running for county mayor. And I'm not going to talk politics on my man and his stool Sunday show. I don't really, the politics I espouse are my own, and um, they reflect my own independent moral foundation as opposed to uh, one or the other political party. I just wish that there was a party based on my moral foundation. <laughs> I mean, not on mine per se, but that there were more people who said, there's a lot of people who think like us, we should make our own. And I know a lot of you would say there's libertarians and there's other parties, but it's neither the Democrat or Republican as far as I'm concerned. But um, anyway, uh, Jason mentions that there's a photo of Osaka flipping the bird. Um, how classy is that? I don't know. Let's Let's go find it, shall we? So uh, we'll, we'll go from my wonderful scottchristopher.net homepage here, and let's, let's take Osaka. Let's look her up. Let's put bird. 
Um, let's go to images. Naomi Osaka bird. Maybe I should put flipping the bird. I don't know if, if that's critical. Was that it? No. It might have been somebody's meme. Let's put flipping the, the bird. Naomi Osaka. Sorry, I cannot confirm or deny that Naomi Osaka has been seen flipping the bird. If she did, I would say it was classless. If she didn't, then um, I would still say it would be classless, but I... I cannot respond, having done my due diligence by trying to Google it. I think that's fair. That's how we, how we do things uh, today. So, um, and then yesterday, Liz and I were able to go to the Utah State Fair, um, which I think it might have opened yesterday. And normally the Utah State Fair is uh, a big deal. I mean, like a lot of people, and it's packed full, and it's a state fair, so it's, you know, appropriately kind of scroungy, but it's something to do, and it was beautiful weather. And there must have been a hundred people there. I mean, there were more than a hundred, but I mean, it's it was empty, and I, I hope that it filled up at night, but they definitely are suggesting you wear masks, and I'd say half were and half weren't. I mean, it's outside, and there's the midway, and there's carnival rides, and there's all kinds of stuff. If you're, if you're in Utah and you weren't aware that it's going on, it's only like six bucks. Um, it's not great, but it's, it's the state fair. And this was, this was for me the greatest moment. I have never, I didn't know pigs could be that big. Um, and this, I don't even think this photograph is really capturing um, the, the, just how enormous um, this, this sow is. But there were um, she has about 15 piglets there, all sleeping in a pile. And one of them there, you can kind of see, the, the, the one closest to us, you can see his whole back, right? And then you have, there's little legs pooping out underneath it. And so there was this little one underneath this huge pile, and we were worried that it was dead. Um, but it wasn't. We were happy about that. So get to the state fair and... Uh, Oh, her f oh, so her friend flipped off. Oh, okay. I'm reading your comments now. It was not Naomi Osaka. It was a friend of hers. Oh, her rapper best friend flipping the bird. See, if I would just read your comments carefully, Jason, I would not indict you uh, for slander. Or is it libel? I learned that in college once. Um, I haven't seen one commercial for the state fair, Kathy says. It was so huge in the build-up weeks before pandemic, I guess. Yeah, really, if, if you go there, in spite of the fact that you have to go to a part of town that lately is not, and it, it's never been, the west side of Salt Lake uh, proper, um, is in need of some, some re, uh, redoing there. Um, and, and lately, with everything going on, it's, it's not great. But it's a secure area, and it's a, it's, a, it's a nice fair park, and they do have the cows, the pigs, uh, all the uh, cute little goats. They've got all kinds of midway rides, fair, you know, the Ferris wheel and the whoop de doos and gr tons of meat and food. I mean, I, have, I almost had a stroke, heart attack, whatever, just the smell of of the brisket and the ribs and the and the footlong hot dogs and I mean carnies they do up carny food right uh, of course we didn't eat there we we ended up at Mi Ranchito <laughs> there was just so much to choose from we couldn't decide and so in fairness to everyone else we decided we'll just not we'll not eat anything you know so that's kind of how we how we left it so Oh, Amy, Amy Kane is listening from Alabama, but she's in Facebook timeout and can't harass you. Not sure what that means. I don't know what Facebook timeout is. Maybe she's uh, been quarantined, <laughs> but whatever. 
My final picture, my final reminder is of the cutest baby in the world, Harrison. Uh, he is my grandson. He's not just the son of my son. He's my grandson. I own it. I'm happy to own it. It doesn't change the fact that I still feel like a very young man. Still can play very young roles. Um, and you can see my beautiful uh, daughter-in-law kind of behind him there. Her reflection in the mirror as she's taking the picture of that ridiculously cute kid. So that's, that's the final the final deal. Although Nathan is asking, I would love to hear what led you to the LDS church and your testimony on how you know it to be true. Well, that may just have to be a message for our next adventure together. So uh, unless things break down or I just get lazy again, like I do, um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a wrap on this particular man and his stool. Hope you've enjoyed it. Tell a friend, leave your comments, and uh, by all means, have a great week. And let's, let's recap next week, next week. Am I off? Is it off? <laughs>